Hello everyone, welcome back to It's RJ TV. We're talking wind rings today, but this isn't your typical wind guide rings video. This is for beginners. This is for people like myself who don't understand the rings. So it's kind of like a rings 101 video. And all I'm going to do is I'm using this awesome website, Golf Clash Notebook. And that's all you have to do is go to www.golfclash.com notebook all one word dot io or just type in golf clash notebook in google and it'll bring this up you can sign in you can make up an account but for the uh, practice or the purpose of this video today i am just going to show you exactly what to do or what i do and you can determine whether it's good enough for you or not if you are not currently using the ring system because you think it's too hard this video is directed for you First thing we're going to do is click on Tools, and then we're going to click on Wind Chart Creator. Now, all you do is put all your clubs in, and for the purpose of showing you how simple this tool is, I'm going to do it on video. It would be a lot quicker if I were to just have everything ready, but I am currently in Tour 8. Sometimes I go on a losing streak, and I go down to Tour 7, so... I have two different lists I have saved to my computer because my clubs vary a little bit. I'm going to do Tour 7 just for the purpose of this video. And right off the bat, I have the Extra Mile, Level 7. So you collect, you just select your club, the level, and then Add Club. And it pops up over here on the right-hand side. Then we just go right back in. And I'm using the Sniper, Level 9 on this course which is tour seven is the one I'm building and then I'm going to go and slick the slick select the backbone which I also have maxed out now your numbers are going to be totally different than my numbers which is fine I'm going to show you based on mine and then when you make your own chart I'm going to show you how to make sense out of your own chart so the backbone then we go with the thorn I have a level seven thorn so we go Thorn, and then 7, Add Club. I'm using the level 10 Skewer. Skewer, level 10, Add Club. The level 5 Nirvana. And there we go. And one more club to add, which is my Malibu. And that is also level 7 add the club once you add all the clubs you'll see them all right here all you do is you simply hit create chart it'll open a, f a little file here if you happen to be on Windows 10 like I am and it'll create this handy dandy little chart where you can actually just save it to your desktop which is exactly what I'm going to do because it's nice to have and you can just open it up as a reminder if you ever have to go back and label the folder um you know tour seven so now we see all these confusing numbers underneath the club you see it says extra mile level seven accuracy of this club is 45 and that's how they get all these calculations out you have your max distance you have your mid distance and you have your minimum distance we're not going to pay attention to most of these numbers because it's just too much to remember so this is what i like to do i like to round now by rounding, I'm not going to get that hole in one or those super long chip ins all the time. But what it is going to do for me is increase my ability to get the hole in ones or the albatrosses or the eagles. But it's also going to keep me on the fairway when I have a crazy wind and I don't know how to handle it. So what do I do? Well, this is all I do. Instead of remembering that the extra mile is 2.10 at max and 2.40 at mid and 2.80 at minimum I just put it in my head what is the max number and I round it to the closest half ring so for the sake of this my extra mile 7 I'm just gonna say is 2 miles per hour equals one ring I don't care about 4.2 which is the second ring I just need to know how much it is I could do the other math on my head if I have a 10 mile an hour wind I know I have to move two 
and one half rings over and I will show you that just a little bit later on in the video let, let me not get ahead of myself now the sniper has 100 accuracy nice easy round number that is one ring equals one mile per hour so I just jot down one um, here we go again the backbone 92 accuracy so it's actually 1.16 I don't care about the 0.16 it's so close to one I just mark down a 1. Then we go to the Thorn 7. Once again, we're at 1.86. It might as well be 2, right? Now, sure, going to 5 miles an hour, you might be a tick off here or there, but again, you don't want to line up. You don't want to set yourself up for a mistake. If you hit a great ball, you want to make sure that your ball is still going to land on the fairway. So when we're just talking about a 0.14 difference, I'm calling the Thorn a 2 go down to the skewer this is an interesting one the accuracy is only 71 and it's 1.58 so I'm just gonna call that one and a half rings I'm sorry one and a half uh, one ring equals one and a half miles per hour now the uh, Nirvana and the Malibu you got to be really careful with because these can shrink down so little I just go by the max number and the Nirvana is 1.91 let's just call that 2 and the Malibu is 1.94 we will also call that 2 so we just eliminated all these numbers and on my little piece of paper that I have here or computer however you want to write it out for my tour 7 clubs I know that my extra mile level 7 is 2 rings I'm sorry, two miles per hour per ring. My sniper and my backbone is one. My thorn is two. My skewer is one and a half. And then both of my mistake clubs, my rough iron and my sand wedge are two. So technically, if I wanna make this really easy on myself, I can find a slightly less accurate club or a slightly more accurate club instead of my skewer. And then the only thing I have to remember is the ones and twos now you're going to want to know well what does one and two mean i'm going to show you that next hey now we're on video okay now i need to explain exactly what is a ring we're going to edit this picture we're going to have my ugly drawing all over it there we go we're going to mark up so right off the bat let's zoom in this is our target right well, the first thing we need to do in understanding the ring system, let me get a select this here and just draw a line right down the middle. Why did I do that? Well, when you think of the ring system, a lot of people will confuse and think, okay, well, the yellow equals one ring and then the orange equals two rings, blue, green, white. That's not the case. If you adjust that way, you're adjusting over by double so don't pay attention to that yellow line that's just my ball guide but this is an excellent club uh, I'm using my extra mile level 7 and I'm going to explain everything right here so right off the bat if I have a two mile an hour wind I am just going to move it over to the edge of the yellow and I'll put a little mark there right here you, see, you guys see that little mark hopefully you're watching on uh, a bit of a device there that has a little bit of size and then we know that it's 2.10 but we don't have to care who cares about the one you know the one zero so you get a two mile an hour wind you simply wherever you want this to aim you adjust accordingly let's say we get a seven mile an hour wind well we know that the half of the yellow is two so all we do is we go two then we look at the next ring, the orange one, that's four. Then we know blue is two more um, miles per hour. So that's six. What did I say? Seven? Well, seven's kind of tough because we're counting by two. So it's going to be right in the middle of the clear ring or the green ring, right where I'm putting that mark at. Now, if I have a seven mile an hour wind and I want the ball to land exactly where I have it placed on this fairway and the wind is blowing this way then I need to move the center of my bullseye over to that black spot now don't worry don't get confused I'm gonna show you this in action I just had to explain the ring 
system so you know exactly what I'm doing. Again, you know, this is just, this is very primitive. I'm, I, I just, I had writer's block for so long. I'm like, I got to get this video out. So here we are, extra mile. If I had a little stylus, I would write the, f all, we, all we know is yellow is two when we cut it in half. Orange is four. Blue is six. Green or clear is eight. And white is 10. If we had a 20 mile an hour wind, then we'd move the entire target over to where we need it to be hope i'm not getting too confusing or ahead of myself so let's hop out and hop right into a game so let's open up golf clash and let's implement these turn the volume off just so it doesn't go over what i'm saying here west coast pro series win lose or draw i'm posting this video so you can see you know because i'm not guaranteeing you're going to win every game what i'm going to guarantee is you're going to hit the ball where you want it to go regardless of you know where it's at now i'm not really a big fan of this course of course <laughs> but we're we're going to go with it because this is the course that it's selected so this is where i want my ball to land right what we do is we got 6.9 miles per hour we're just going to call that seven seven miles per hour then I'm going to point north, as you can see, and then I'm going to make an adjustment. So here's the ring. We're going to use the take shot as the, you know, as our guide. So there's two miles an hour. There's four. There's six. Half of that ring is seven. Now let's just slide this down so the yellow's in the middle, a little bit more. And then let's take our shot. Now I was explaining it, so it took a little bit longer. But let's see, look where the ball just bounced. That's exactly where we want it. And we're set up for our next shot. It's as simple as that. Now, when you're not explaining it, you'll be left with a lot more time left on the clock. So please don't think that it's gonna take you all the way down to one second. You're not gonna have time to prepare. That was simply just me explaining it. And I took the long way because I didn't wanna overpower it, hit it great. And, you know, then you wouldn't clearly see what the bars can do. So I didn't use any spin. I didn't use any curl. And I ended up exactly where I needed the ball to be. Why? Because I know two, two miles per hour equals one ring of adjustment. Now let's see if we can't chip this in or get super close. See, he, he eyeballed it. And look where he ended up. I want this to stop happening for you. Now, this is, can we get lucky? Yes, we can. Okay, we got the thorn. We're very close to max distance. Well, we're not that close to max distance. Close enough to max distance. And what I like to do is go full backspin because wherever we aim this, it's going to come really close to the hole. But let's try to dunk it. Now, with the thorn, we want to zoom in and get this dead center. With the thorn, we know, once again, we're at two, mile, two rings per mile an hour. So there's yellow two, four, six, and we're at 7.2. So half of the green ring or clear, we're going to move it down there. And if we're fortunate, we're going to dunk it. But if we're not fortunate, watch as the ball comes back with that 100% backspin. Look how close we are. So we missed the dunk by maybe half a ring because we didn't know the exact measurements, but now it just makes it so much easier to ensure that you get on the green or that you have very easy putts when you're approaching the putting greens. He's gonna take his shot with the Nirvana. He can definitely get it in, but it's definitely not a give me shot. And then we can also execute this in the shootout where I think it really comes in handy for you because shootouts, most games end in shootouts. You should have the advantage. Okay, he slightly missed. And I'm happy I have this gentleman or lady, I didn't see, as an opponent because they're not using the ring system. So you kind of get eyeballing versus, you know, the actual ring method. 
If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to be I'm trying to be as specific as I can. Watch the video over. If you need to watch it three times to comprehend, that's fine. You know how many wind ring videos I watched and I just wasn't getting it and then I just simplified it like this for myself. Now, am I go am I hitting a whole bunch of chip-ins and everything all the time? They've went up, but they're not give me. Otherwise, I would have dunked that um, shot with no problem. That's where I eventually want to be. That's like the ring system. Uh, instead of 101, we'll call it 102 or two, you know, 201 or whatever. So this is an excellent course right here. Uh, this is kind of a tough one, and the wind can definitely throw you off because you can easily go into the rough up top. You can, you know, end up in the sand trap. So let's see where we end up. Again, even if I lose this and he hits a wonderful shot or sinks a hole in one, you're still going to see me getting very, very close to the hole because I know the general ring system. We're going to be using the sniper, which is super easy for shootouts. And with the sniper, it's just one mile per hour of wind equals one ring. Remember, if it's if there's a two there, then that means one mile per hour, I'm sorry, two miles per hour of wind equals one ring. So just because the club's more accurate does not stop you from adjusting less for the wind. Now, we, do, we need just a touch of backspin. We'll go right about four bars here. And I want, this is how I want to hit it. I want it right here. There's a problem. I have a 3.5 mile an hour wind. Okay, so we know that yellow is one, orange is two, blue is three, and half. There, oh, what did I do? What did I do? I didn't adjust. Okay, so we're going to move it down, cut that yellow in half with that bar there, and let's see where we end up. Perfect shot. Looks good. And I didn't put enough backspin on it, but I would say my aim was true, wouldn't you? I hit the pin. That's exactly what I wanted to do. The only mistake I made was not putting enough backspin on. And because of that, it cost me 100000 but I'm not teaching backspin, so I don't care. Anyway, this is how you use the ring system. Again, I went through all three, I covered everything. Again, you know, I'm not coming across as articulate as I'd like to, but I've been planning this video forever. And unfortunately, um, you know, I just, I'm, I'm jibber jabbing, I'm, I'm, I'm being a little long winded, but this is how you can win a lot more games. And remember when playing that hole, put a little more than four backspin on. Thanks for watching. If the video helped you in any way, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and let me know in the comments how you feel about this video. If you watch the video and you already know the ring system, well, you probably know how to use the rings better than this. This is for the people that don't know how to use the ring system or don't have time to learn it or don't want to learn it because it's too complicated. So this is just oversimplifying it. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.